Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy online. Use my code Holly for 10 free gifts plus free shipping with any purchase. That's adameve.com. Use code Holly for 10 free gifts plus free shipping. Hello everybody, happy holidays. I'm here at my parents' ranch for um, Christmas and I thought I'd do a little vlog while I'm here. It happens to be kind of quiet right now, which I don't know how long it's gonna stay like that, but I kind of want to update everybody on how I was doing. I know that it's been a while since I've done a vlog. Uh, since I last did one, I had a baby, which is kind of a big life-changing event. And a lot of you have been asking how I'm doing, so I thought I would fill you in on all of that. So, um, I guess let's start with the little story of my labor and delivery. I had a shockingly easy delivery. It was really surprisingly so, especially because I am what they call a geriatric pregnancy. Yes, when you're over the age of 35, they call you a geriatric pregnancy. So being the fact that I was 42 when I had my baby, I was way up there. So they were anticipating, not definitely that I would have issues, but it's certainly harder to have an easy delivery when you're older. And your first birth is always supposed to be the most difficult. So I was expecting this really drawn out labor, this awful delivery, um, a lot of complications. There's something about um, other, when you're pregnant, people love to tell you like their nightmare birth stories. Like, oh, let me tell you how horrible my experience was, which um, freaked me out, uh, needless to say. And so when I had the experience that I had, I was like, oh my God, that was so much easier than I thought it would be. But it wasn't like all completely smooth sailing, no pain. So I'll just kind of fill you in on exactly how that went. So I was scheduled to be induced at 39 weeks. Now your baby is actually full term at 39 weeks. 40 weeks is when they uh, lock in your due date. So your due date is always estimated, of course, because you know women don't give birth like on the dot. You know, some women give birth before, some women give birth afterwards, but your due date is a pretty um, generic, like middle of the road, um, good idea for a baby to come out 40 weeks. That's that's the due date. But your baby's actually full term at 39 weeks. Now, I had thrown my hip out, so I was pretty much crippled. It was very difficult for me to walk, to get up and down the stairs. I was in a lot of pain. And uh, so my doctor was like, look, you know, if you want to get this baby out a week early, like we can do that safely. So I was like, yes, get this thing out of me. Initially, I had this idea, and I think a lot of first time mothers do this, that I was gonna wait until I was definitely, you know, my body gave birth naturally. I wasn't gonna be induced. I was gonna let nature take its course. And then of course, the further along I got in my pregnancy, the more uncomfortable I became, the bigger I got. I was like, get this out of me. So uh, 39 weeks um, sounded like a good idea. So I had scheduled my induction for the Friday at 7 p.m. And this is because what they initially do is um, they give you something called, I forget the full name of it, but um, they kept calling it MISO. So that's short for like obviously a longer term for this kind of medication that softens your cervix. Now it's not supposed to, it's not Pitocin. Pitocin is the actual drug that um, brings on the contractions. Miso is just to soften your cervix and then they give you the Pitocin later. So the idea was that I would come in in the evening, I would have the Miso and then I would sleep, um, you know, for most of the night while the drug did its uh, work and softened my cervix to make it easier for me to dilate and give birth. And so they planned to give me the Pitocin the next morning to start the contractions. Now, the night before I went in for my induction, I actually started having contractions. And these weren't just Braxton Hicks contractions. Now, for those of you who don't know, Braxton Hicks contractions are kind of like, it's like fake labor. It's these contractions that you kind of have off and on in the later stages of your pregnancy. It's kind of like training your body on um, getting ready for the actual, when you actually go into labor. 
So these were not Braxton Hicks contractions um, because they lasted for a significantly long time. They didn't change if I got up and moved around or shifted position, which generally Braxton Hicks contractions do. They um, were consistent. Um, they were about three to four, no, sorry, four to five minutes apart, um, lasting about 30 seconds. Um, not too severe, you know, I could definitely manage them, but um, they last for a long enough time that, that I felt like my body was, was getting ready to actually deliver. So I took a bath, I just relaxed, and then about three hours later, they went away. And I was like, huh, that's weird, but not completely unusual. And so I went back to bed. So I think my body was already, my body was ready to give birth is what I'm trying to tell you. So I, I got into the hospital. Um, I checked in. They gave me the miso at around maybe nine o'clock. And, you know, we put a movie on. My husband and I brought my laptop and we thought, you know, I'll watch a movie and then we'll go to bed. And then, you know, in the morning they'll give me the Pitocin and I'll actually start my, my real contractions. About 30 minutes later, my contractions started. And so, you know, we were working through them. I brought the birthing ball. He was massaging me. I was breathing through them. And then they went from like a three to like a nine in like 40 minutes. I was in excruciating pain. And so they asked me if I wanted the epidural and I wasn't really ready for that because I thought that it was going to take a long time um, before I would be ready to actually deliver. And I didn't, once you take the epidural, you're basically, you can't move. You're paralyzed pretty much from the legs down. Um, and I thought, oh no, it's too early. You know, this is gonna be hours. Like, you know, I'm expecting it to take like two days for me to give birth, right? And so they said, okay, well, we'll give you like a little bit of morphine to take the edge off. And I said, okay, that sounds good. So they gave me um, a shot of morphine and then my water broke right then. Now, when your water breaks, your contractions advance quickly. And so the nurse said to me, all right, well, these are gonna get significantly more painful and intense. So you might actually wanna try the epidural now. And the morphine didn't do anything for me. I was like, I can't, I'm, you know, before I gave birth, I heard a lot of women say, oh, childbirth is a pain you'll never experience in any other situation, like, it's just insane. And I was like, oh, okay, it, this is true. It was <laughs> terrible. I was biting my husband's hand, I don't even remember. I was just in so much pain. So uh, so they gave me the epidural, but of course it takes a while to set up for the epidural. The epidural is a shot. It's actually not even just a shot. It's like the, they put a needle in your spine, which is attached to the anesthesia. And, um, you know, they, they pump it into at regular intervals. So it's not just a shot that goes away. It's something they actually have to attach into your spine and the tube has to come out and um, go into the machine and they have to monitor you. So it's a very precise um, procedure because they have to get that needle like right in between, right in the perfect spot in your spine so that, um, so that it works and it doesn't, you know, if they hit the wrong place, it can cause like severe back pain. Um, headaches. I, I, I'm not sure if like in very rare cases it can cause paralysis. I don't, I don't think so, but basically you, you want to get it done right. And by then I was in so much pain. I was shaking insanely because the morphine and the pain. And so I'm just like, like convulsing um, and, you know, trying to breathe really deeply because the contractions are just so painful. And of course they're worse by then, right? Because they did get worse after the contractions came. I mean, 10 out of 10 pain, it was terrible. So they, uh, they gave me the epidural and oh my God, that changed everything. It was just like, whew, I was floating and everything felt amazing. I could feel the pressure of the contractions, but there was no pain. So they said, okay, um, they checked me. By the way, when I got into the hospital, I was already three centimeters dilated, which is really good. Um, they checked me at that point and I was five centimeters dilated. You have to be 10 centimeters dilated to give birth, by the way. So they said, okay, we're just gonna let you rest for an hour and we'll come back and, and check you. And again, like I'm thinking it's gonna take me forever to get to 10 centimeters because this is what I hear from so many other people. 
So we relax for about an hour. The nurse comes back. I'm 10 centimeters dilated. So she's like, oh my God, like you're, you're ready to go. Okay, let's get ready to start pushing. And so they're prepping me for pushing. And the nurse says to me, okay, so, you know, pushing usually takes between like an hour to four hours. It can be really exhausting, but you know, you got to do it and power through. And I was like, okay, okay. You know, I'm getting ready. I'm, I'm digging in for like a really, really long, long, um, experience of like, you know, exhaustion and pain. You know, these women say it's like running a marathon and, uh, and so the OBGYN calls um, into, there's a whole other team for delivery, by the way. Like there's so many people that attended me. It was insane. I had like 12 different people take care of this. Um, this was at UCLA, by the way, which is an excellent, excellent hospital. Like I have to say, I was really impressed with how that went. So she calls the delivery team and says, you know, this woman's getting ready to push, like be prepared to come in. I don't know, at some point, not right away. So it was very like kind of casual, like, you know, we're getting ready. And I just feel like the pressure, like moving down, right, of her head. And so I turned to my husband and I'm like, I think this baby's coming sooner than they think it's coming. And my husband kind of looks down and he's like, I think I see the head. And he calls the doctor and the doctor comes over and looks and she's like, oh my God, the baby's coming. So she calls the delivery team. She's like, get in here now, the baby's coming right now. And so they lay me back. They're like, okay, okay, push. And I'm like, wait, it's already here. Wait, I thought this was gonna take forever. I did three or four pushes, um, 10 minutes, baby came, came out. So I was expecting a one to four hour ordeal. It took 10 minutes. It was crazy. And so, Violet was born perfectly healthy, no problems. Um, it's kind of funny because, you know, again, like people love to tell pregnant women what their experience is gonna be like, how they're gonna feel about seeing their baby for the first time. People were telling me, oh, you know, being pregnant is, is so difficult and the labor is gonna be so painful and long and horrible. But, you know, the minute you see your beautiful baby girl, you're gonna fall in love instantly and you're gonna forget all of that. And another friend told me, you know, she gave birth and it was like she went through a wormhole and like the world was different and the universe was different and, and everything changed in that one instant. And um, that wasn't really my experience. And I felt kind of guilty about it. I think partially, you know, I was obviously on a lot of drugs. So I think I was a little bit disconnected from the moment. But when they pulled Violet out of me, and immediately put her on her chest, on my chest, because that's generally what they do. They immediately put them on your chest for skin to skin talk, contact, for immediate bonding, unless there's something wrong with the baby and they have to take it into the NICU to address whatever that situation may be. So they pull her out and she's covered with like blood and like all this crap. I mean, it's just like, she's just disgusting, like covered with all this white shit. And they're like, here's your baby, she's so beautiful. And I'm like, oh my God, that thing is so ugly. And so they're like, here, they like put her on me. I'm like, can't you guys like wash her first? Like, oh my God, she's so gross. So that was like my initial thought was like, oh my God, this thing is so disgusting. <laughs> Give it a bath. <laughs> but of course I didn't say that. And uh, they put her on me and, you know, obviously like I cried and I was so happy to have her, but I just, I don't know. I think I, I had imagined what that initial reaction would be to when I gave birth, um, you know, for so many times over that it would be this life-changing experience in an instant. And it just, it kind of wasn't like that for me. It was sort of anticlimactic. And I don't know if it was because my labor and delivery was so easy that, um, you know, when she came, I was kind of like, I, I don't know, like I hadn't gone through this horrible experience that made me so relieved to have finally given birth. It just went by so quickly. Um, from start to finish, um, I was only in the, the labor, um, only took me nine and a half hours. And for a lot of women, that's like 24, 36 hours. So, I mean, I got off really easy. Um, but, you know, of course, obviously we were really excited and uh, it took me, it took me a little while to bond with her. I'm somebody who I don't get attached easily and quickly, but when I do become attached to people, I'm 
fiercely loyal and um, I'm very bonded, but I, it takes me a while. Like I, I'm just, I've kind of always been that way. And I was sort of that way with my baby too. I think for the first few weeks, I kind of, it felt a little surreal. I thought like, okay, like at some point, someone's going to come take this baby back because it's not mine. Like it felt like it wasn't mine or something. I don't know. It was really odd. But now that she is uh, two months and three weeks, I, oh my God, I'm so in love with her. Like she's amazing. She's so cute. And now that she's starting to respond to me and smile at me and laugh at me and like coo, it's like, oh my God, when your baby smiles at you, it's like, oh, it's, it's like, it kills you. It's just absolutely heart melting. So, you know, we love her so much. And this was her first Christmas. And even though we couldn't have everybody here, like we wanted to, um, my sister's an ICU nurse. So, you know, she had to keep her distance and, um, but it was, it was really special to, you know, I got to at least like be with my parents and obviously my husband and, um, you know, my parents love her. I mean, my mom wanted grandkids for the longest time. So she was so excited that I finally had a daughter. And I think we're gonna try for another one. We're gonna try for number two pretty soon because I'm not getting any younger and I wanna give her a sibling and then I think I'm gonna be done. So um, I think also the fact that my experience was so easy has kind of made me feel like, oh, this isn't so bad. Like, I'll just have another one, no big deal. Um, we'll see how that goes. I mean, if I can even get pregnant again. But uh, I don't know, maybe the next one won't be so easy. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of fill you in on how it went. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been asking. I appreciate everybody's support. I'm kind of slowly easing out of maternity leave now. I've started doing new interviews for my podcast. And I'm going to go back to shooting in January. I'm very limited. I, I think I'm only going to do two shoots a month to start because um, having a baby is a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. I had some pretty unrealistic ideas of uh, what it was going to be like to birth a child and I was so wrong. <laughs> it is so much work. She needs me all the time because I basically, you know, I'm breastfeeding. So uh, I need to feed her constantly and she just needs a lot of love and attention. And to be honest, I, you know, I wanna be around her all the time. I, I love her. She's my daughter. I have a kid that's so weird. It's still so weird to me. It's just like, what a life-changing experience, but I'm so, so happy I did it. And I'm glad that I waited this long. You know, a lot of people were surprised that I would have a baby so late in my life, you know, 42 is kind of getting up there, but I'm glad I waited so long. I think it was perfect for me. You know, I spent my, my early 20s getting fucked up and partying and, getting all that out of my system and then my 30s building my career and trying to figure out you know who I was as a person and and now I think that I'm in the perfect position at my age to have a family and I mean look I'm very healthy and I'm in great shape well maybe not right now I have about 30 pounds of baby weight to lose but you know what I mean like I'm healthy like I'm active I don't smoke or drink or do drugs I eat well um, I exercise and I take my vitamins so I think that you know I I was in a good place to have a baby physically and mentally and I think that I'll be able to have another one and I don't know sometimes the idea of like being a housewife doesn't sound that bad which is insane I never thought that there'd be anything in my life that would be more important to me than my career and uh, I was wrong. My my child is more important to me than anything. And I never thought that that would be possible. But people are right when they say that having children change your lives. Change. Having children changes your life. Anyways, thank you everybody for your support. So many of you have been really kind and have been kind of following me through this journey. So... I just want to say I love you all and I appreciate you 
And um, I guess that's it. I'll talk to you all later.